Hey, hey, hey. Okay, so we're going live today, and it's going to be a little different. It's We're going to work on some of our shading techniques and some ins and outs, some of my best tips on how to get those really good, deep shades without it being super distracting. Um, I've had a lot of people message me on what are some easy ways to add some shading to my projects without it being a hot mess. So I figured, why don't we just go over some of those today? We will be painting a project. We'll get, we're going to be painting an ornament towards the end using all the tips and tricks that we are going to show you today. But for, at first, we're going to start off with our mixed media pad. So grab a drink, grab a snack. Y'all come and hang out with us. If you're catching the live, say good morning. Tell me where you're watching from. Tell me what you got as a snack or where, where you're at. Are you at work? Do you have your headphones in? Are you sneaking away from the boss to catch our live today? Or are you at home with your mixed media pad too? And if you're catching the replay, put that hashtag replay just to let me know that you came and hung out with us for a little while. I would love to connect with you even after that. Guess what I don't have? I don't have clean water. That's okay. We will make it. I think so. Hold on. You know what I do have? I do have a clean cup and my drinking water. <laughs> there's all, there's multiple ways that we can get this done. So let's do that. I just need a little bit of clean water. I'm not getting back up. I've already sat down. I'm comfortable. We're just going to make do with what we got. So I've got some clean water. It was intended for me to drink, but <laughs> we'll make do with what we got. Oh, Terry's sitting on the couch, hanging out with us. Good morning, Jacqueline. Good morning, Dawn and Marie and Sheila. Nicole, working from home. I love working from home. I absolutely love working from home. Okay, so let's get into the nitty gritty of it all. Everyone's here to learn how to shade, so let's not let's not uh, disappoint. Let's go ahead and get into it. Hey, Marie. Hey, Terry. At um at the oh, she's at work. She's at, at the drag eight to five. Want to be home painting? Well, hopefully, I'll this will inspire you a little bit. So when you do get home, you're you'll be itching to pick up your paintbrushes. I actually get to watch today without customers interrupting. Woohoo! I'm so excited. Hey, Christy Rayner, little troublemaker you. Okay. Ow, 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 ow. Okay. Whew, working from home in my recliner with you on the big TV. Sheila puts hers up on the TV. So if you have the way to cast your phone up to your, up to your TV, that's what Sheila does. Sheila's like, I'm not dealing with the watching from my phone. I'm going to be watching from the big screen. We're going to move this out of the way because I'm almost pumped it over already okay so we're going to start with a clean piece of paper i'm actually going to get rid of my turntable we'll use that later on um, we're going to start with a clean palette y'all know me i like to reuse my palettes if i'm just painting willy-nilly and, and i'm not like either mixing or i'm not blending or anything like that this is the tray it goes on but if i'm going to be shading this is the tray that it goes on so let me show you the one product that i love to talk about we're not going to talk about both of them today, but I am going to introduce you if you have not been introduced to them yet. We've got Folk Art Floating Medium and Folk Art Blending Gel. To talk, they look identical in the bottle, okay? So look, in the bottle, they look identical, okay? They're just clear. They look identical, but I get a lot of questions on what's the difference, okay? So Floating Medium is just that. It helps you float paint on top of other paints, okay? It's the clear stuff that's in every bottle of paint, okay? So if you were to paint with this, it's going to paint in the same nature as regular paint, okay? So the, the clear stuff that's in your um, paint, that's what this is, okay? In a nutshell, without getting super technical, that's all floating medium is. It does not extend your work time. It does not extend dry time. It's going to dry as fast as regular acrylic paints dry, okay? That's a that's a bonus when you're working with it so, because you're like, okay, I know how long I have to work with this. Blending gel will water down your paint. It will uh, make paints a little more translucent. It extends the dry time of your paint. If you need to have some extra work time with your paints, you're going to want to use blending gel. We're not doing that today, okay? I just wanted you to know the difference. I get that question a lot. 
Y'all ignore my little my, my little clearance stickers. I like to shop the clearance. And when I saw that all the floating medium went on clearance at the old Lobby Lobby, I grabbed every bottle that they have. <clears throat> that they have. Okay, so floating color. This makes floating color easy. It says it right on the bottle. If you've never heard of floating, let me let me introduce you to it. It's the way that I shade. Okay. Um, there's multiple ways to achieve shading in your work, and that's how I achieve depth. Instead of using my bag of paint pens on every project that I use, that's how I started off um, when I was painting home decor pieces. But when I would paint just for the fun, if I, I found myself, if I was painting in my mixed media pad just for the fun of it, I would never grabbed for the, uh, the, the paint pens. I never did. Um, but when I painted wood pieces or home decor pieces, I found myself grabbing for the paint pens and I sat down with myself and I was like, why am I, why do I paint two totally different ways depending on what I'm actually painting on, on canvas? I didn't typically grab for a paint pen, but something about painting on wood, you know, home decor pieces, I would grab paint pens. And I think it's just because I didn't quite trust my skill that I had when it came to the wood. So I started stretching my muscle, my brain, and stretching my painting skills so that I would get more confident on wood as I was on mixed media paper or on canvas or uh, working on really anything else. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna stretch our muscles. We're gonna practice today, but don't worry. For all of those project seekers, we will be working on a project as well, okay? So we're going to use everything that we learned today. We're going to do a quick little project at the end. But let me let me show you the anatomy of what I can floating medium, okay? This is folk art. Y'all do know that I love to use deco art products. I have yet to find a product in deco art line that is the same as this. I'm sure they have it. I just have yet to come across it in my journey. I love the new designs for this week. Terry, I do too. Y'all know Christmas is my jam. So that uh, we released some new Christmas designs. Y'all should go check them out whenever you get a, a second. It's a whole lot of Erica. What? Yes. Um, sitting for my sister and I don't have any of my paint supplies here way out of the, out in the country. There was a herd of deer out here in the front. Oh, Laura, I love deer. We have deer that come up to our back our back fence and I just love it. I love when it's this time of year when it's really cool in the mornings and the deer start getting comfortable coming up to the fence. I love just sitting here at my back window. I'll sit right here and just look out at my backyard and watch the deer come up. Hey Lynette from Michigan. I love watching your videos. I love that you come and hang out with me. All right we need to vote on a color. Let's vote on a color. Someone uh the first color that gets two votes. Let's, it could be a specific paint color or it could be a just generic like rainbow color. So if you've got a paint name, first one that gets two votes, that's the color that we're going to work with, okay? It has to have a good pigment though. Just keep that in mind. And watch the records. <laughs> Terry, that's a story for another day. <laughs> we're talking about them records today. The chippy paint wood would be gorgeous on that ornament. Well, you know, Sheila, it would. And I've got some extra ornaments back there. I may do a couple of ornaments. So this is the technique that we learned in the paint studio this month. Um, it was super fun. So while we're waiting on some paint recommendations, let me show you some of the, the swatches that we did. We did a door hanger, and it's right here. Let me see if I can grab it without getting up. Um, oh, oh, oh. So we did a door hanger and we did some whimsical flowers right here. We did a faux stain down here, but this was the showstopper. This was the actual technique that we learned right here. Um, this right here, this is what's up here. I taught them how to do that. Um, that is multiple, multiple colors of chippy wood. I kind of, I kind of, it was a happy accident of me practicing other techniques and it just kind of this this is what this is actually the very first piece that I did it's really dark but I went back and did it in lighter colors and it turned out so pretty so we voted on colors and did a Halloween scheme we also did a Grinch scheme look how beautiful that turned out and then old Maria Martinez had she's like we got to play with some gold we got to play with some gold so that's what we did this month in the paint studio. If you have any questions about the paint studio, feel free to ask them down in the comments. And we're talking about floating today and we do a lot of shading in the paint studio. We go over shading practically every month. Um, the Grinch scheme. Yes, Nicole, that one was my favorite. 
So this was, okay, so Marie Mosley voted on these colors. She curated that one. Um, Maria Martinez curated this one. And then the entire paint studio as a whole, we curated, we wanted to play with some Grinch colors because we were, we're all big fans of the Grinch in there. So that's what we did over in the paint studio. Every month in the paint studio, we learn a new paint technique. Um, and we just have fun playing around with it. All right. So have we picked any blue? Christy says any blues. Lori says purple. Uh, I am not confident with paint pens. I do. I don't do hand lettering. Uh, well, Terry, you and me are in that same boat. I don't do hand lettering. I'd much rather make a stencil and use a stencil over and over and over again than hand letter. I'm telling you, if it's more than one word on the piece, I'm probably going to make a stencil or cut it out with my Cricut. Let's see. Blues. I know you love the raccoon story, Terry. I'll try and fit it in naturally somewhere else just so you can get a refresher on the raccoon story. All right, so Terry said blue. I had a blue. The blue you had. So how about the teal? Okay, so Sheila said the teal too. Okay, so this, okay, we'll we'll use the desert turquoise. That one got two votes. And Christy Rainwell will be happy too. It's kind of a blue. It's kind of a blue. Good morning, good morning. I love fall colors. Red, oranges, and yellows. Laura, me too. All right, so that's all we're going to need, okay? That is all we're going to need. We're going to take some floating medium. I'm going to put that in the middle. Usually I put it over in the corner. We're just going to go with it. So the way you load your brush, there's two things that I do. I, I pat once, flip my brush over, pat twice. Okay. That loads both sides of your brush. I want you to be very aware. There are two sides to your brush. When you're painting and you're running out of paint, no, you're not. It just got pushed to the other side. Flip your brush over. As long as you're not shading or, or have multiple colors on your brush. If you just have one color on your brush, flip it over. <laughs> And paint with that side. There's plenty of paint on your brush. I promise. Uh, da, 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 da. I love, I uh, know, that Grinch color scheme. So I've got floating medium in my brush. So I'm going to pat a couple times just to work it into the brush. We want to make sure we're fully loaded with floating medium in our brush, okay? So I typically load my brush the wrong way when I'm floating. And it's just because I'm usually painting really fast with multiple colors. I'm going to teach you the proper way to load your brush with floating medium to shade. Okay. So typically I take the corner of my brush. You can use an angle brush or a flat brush. We're going to use a flat brush today because I think the angle brush throws some people off. I want to show you how to use a, a flat brush. Okay. I typically take the, t uh, uh, the tip one side of my my brush and i dip it into the paint and i start loading my brush that's not the correct way that's the lazy way y'all know me i like to be a lazy painter sometimes here's the proper way you just kind of pick it up from the side okay that way the heaviest concentration of paint is on the very edge of your brush and it's slowly working its way in this way into your brush. You want to keep this side of your brush. My arm still hurts if anybody's wondering every time I move. If you see my face make a face, just know I broke my arm this last week and it's really in a lot of pain. Um, so on this side of brush, we want to keep it crystal clear, okay? So we're going to do this. And as long as our brush stays clear on this side right here, we're going to continue working with it. The second this gets kind of murky or muddy over here on this side, we need to clean our brush and start over. But right now, since we're starting with a clean brush, this is how we load our brush. And if we need to pick up more paint, then that's how we load our brush. See how it stays super crystal clear and it keeps our brush, it keeps the paint kind of concentrated to the most left side of that brush, right? So that's how you load your brush. I forgot. What's your favorite material to cut stencils with? Um, it just depends on if I intend to make a stencil that's going to last a while or if it's a disposable stencil. If it's a disposable stencil, I like to use either poster board from the Dollar Tree or I like to use file folders. And I typically get the legal size file folders from the Dollar Tree because there's more material there for the same price. But I like to use five millimeter or five mil um, mylar. That, I mean, there's, there's all different places you can get it at least five. Sometimes you can go to seven, seven will work too. You just have to do more passes with your cutting machine, but five millimeter or five mil really, I think it's considered mil five mil mylar is kind of a sweet spot.
Okay, so there we go. I'm going to go backwards too. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to practice a couple of brush strokes just to get some control. So we've got our brush loaded and you want to do short, choppy brush strokes. Okay. And if you notice, let me see if I can get you closer. See how it's kind of wet right here and you kind of see it? Don't worry about that. It's going to dry crystal clear. The reason I use white pay, uh, white trays, these are the meat trays over in the food preparation area over where the, the styrofoam plates are in Dollar Tree and Walmart. Now, I am going to dip my brush over here in the floating medium just to keep it, uh-oh, uh uh-oh, uh got a little paint. Didn't mean to grab that. Okay, so now I've got my, my brush properly loaded again. Let's do another one. I like to use the white trays because they tell me if my brush is dirty. If I'm you, or you can use palette paper. So we can get it as saturated as we want, or we can make it as light as we want. It just depends on how many brush strokes we want to, to work with, okay? So let's do another one. See how it's kind of, I call that Morse code. See how it's kind of just translucent a little bit. We can also go back and work. There we go. So that's what floating medium does. So my brush, if you look at my brush, when I place my brush down, my br bristles come all the way over here. But if you notice, the paint stops about right there. But it gets a perfect ombre, okay? That's the purpose of the floating medium. You can also use water. Um, I'm not very good at using the water. Um, I consider anybody who can float with water and water alone kind of a witch or a warlock. They work some magic. They work some painting magic. It's not necessarily magic that I'm able to do. Um, I do try to practice it, but I practice it with a lot of frustration. So I, I tend to walk away from it a lot. I am getting better though. Every time I work with water, I do get better. So there's that. So, right. That's the whole point of practicing is not to like master in a short amount of time is to make progress. <laughs> practice doesn't make perfect. Pa pro uh, practice makes progress. So if you ever have something that you're wanting to work with, you really need to make sure that you're practicing and don't expect leaps and bounds. Every time you pick up your paintbrush, expect little bite size, um, little bite size uh, progress. If you learn something in one sitting, you're really not absorbing anything, right? If you learn things little by little, you're mastering each little bite-sized piece. So that's why I say, you know, this is, there, there are techniques whenever I teach a technique that I'll say, this is super easy. You should get this, uh, you know, pretty quick. Um, and then there's times where I'm like, you're going to want to grab your mixed media pad. You're going to want to practice this a few times before you ever touch paintbrush to wood. And that's just me preparing you for just, just expect a little frustration. <laughs> this is not going to come. This baby is not going to be born without labor pains. Okay. So here we go. We're going to keep on keeping on. So we have about five rows of floated color. And like I said, if you look. My brush comes all the way out to here, but that color only comes just about a quarter of an inch. I'm using about a half inch brush. So for reference, that's what's going on with that. Now, let's see if we can, I need a contrasting color. How about, let me find a lighter blue. Let me show you the purpose. Why would we use this? Okay, so now that we know how to do it, let's talk about why we would use it, okay? So we've got desert turquoise. Let's find. Yeah, that'll work. All right. This is sea breeze. Let's see. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Diana. Let's see. Good morning, Dana. What's up? What's up? All right. So I'm going to take my sea breeze. We're going to make a couple of squares, about two or three squares. So I'm going to take my brush or swatches. Okay, there's one swatch. There's another swatch. 
there's another swatch. Okay. Let me blow dry that real quick because we need them to be bone dry, okay? Hey, I got your email and made payment. No hurry. Oh, you're talking to Diana. Sorry. Okay. Oh, no, Brenda. Brenda just said that there was nothing going on at work today, and now she's got an emergency. I hope everything's okay. I hope everything is okay. I love these lessons. I will be so glad to finish the remodel on my basement so that I can get all of my paint stuff ripped up carpet and cutting down vinyl. Oh, Sheila. Yes, carpet is not paint's best friend. So yeah, I do recommend you get that part done at least before you start painting in there. Well, if you're going to be ripping carpet up anyway, so sling paint. Nobody, care. Nobody cares after that point, huh? Hey, Terry. Okay, so Terry's asking about the paint studio. In the paint studio, we do projects every month. It's a curated project, but within the project is a paint technique that we go over in depth. So this month, we did it. We had to name it. We, it didn't have a name. So I just called it Chippy Wood. I kind of want to call it This Old House because <laughs> that's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of an episode of This Old House when they go up to a house that's been painted multiple times but because of the sun and weather uh, you're starting to see every layer of paint that that house has ever been over the last hundred years um, but it's like that's what we uh, practiced this month there was one month that we went in depth on different ways to paint sunflowers uh, we practice how to uh, do galvanized tin that's been a fan favorite and i tried to tuck that into practically everything um we have some really fun ones coming up for the winter uh, next month will be cr a Christmas theme so that everyone who needs to plan for their Christmas decor, we will be doing a Christmas theme, but the technique tucked into it, the Christmas theme, will be something very specific, kind of like what we're learning today. We go over shading practically every month. Every design we do, there's going to be some floating, some shading, some highlighting, but there's always a very in-depth technique, whether it be a specific flower we're working on or whether it be um, something to help build your backgrounds or um, something that you've been struggling with. Uh, we, we also did, and I'm about to do another tutorial in there on how to do hair, how to paint a more realistic looking hair. So it's just stuff like that. I, it's, it's a group where we paint together every month to build our painting skills to become better painters. That one is my favorite, the blues and the black. Oh, isn't it pretty? Good morning, good morning, Karen. There's my friend. Hey, Samantha and Anna and Miriam. Y'all are catching it just in time because we just went over floating, which I know you girls know how to float because y'all are studio sisters. But now we're going to go over what is floating used for. Okay, so usually for, for floating or shading, it, they're used interchangeably. Floating is a way to achieve shading, okay? Shading can be achieved in many different ways, right? You can do a wet on wet technique. This is not wet on wet. You just watched me blow dry this. When you're doing this technique or working with floating medium, you really want to make sure each layer is bone dry before moving on to the next step. Oh, Sheila says she loved this month's tutorial. It was a fun one. I, I it literally killed me once my friends, Karen being one of them, once my friends said this needs to be taught, I was like, oh, I can't wait now. I can't wait. I can't wait to teach it. So, okay. So remember, we need to load our brush. So let's make sure our brush is clean. Since we've painted with it today, I want to load it with some floating medium. I'm going to come over to a clean spot and I'm going to just do a couple swipes. And as long as my paint tray stays crystal clear, I can almost assume this brush is completely clean and no paint is going to come through and hiccup anything that I've got going on here. Oh, thank you, Miss Pam. Thank you for explaining that for me. Um, it's $15 a month and it's reoccurring. So I'm loading it from the side. Remember, we come in from the side. Me, when I'm going really fast and being lazy, I just dip it in, but I get a lot of paint doing it that way. So if I want to be in control, I want to load it from the side and come over here and create kind of a loading zone, okay? So I've, I'm loaded from the side. I've got my loading zone. 
So here's what how you would normally do float, use your floating technique. Okay. So whenever you've got something painted, say that we've got like um, let's say we've got what's something typical that we paint. Say we've got the the circle on some you know uh, something like on a birdhouse, the circle where the bird goes flying into the the birdhouse. Right. It's a little home. Well, you want to make sure there's a shadow there. You know, so I'm using short, choppy brush strokes to build this up. I start at the very top and I bring it down. And then I can come back in and smooth it out with one long brush stroke. But I want to make sure I, I get the color evenly distributed. Now, when I do need more floating medium, which you will, I do dip it in from the corner like that. All right. So this one has floating medium on it and a, a, a small amount of shade. Say that's not deep enough for me. Do I want, okay, here goes, here goes somewhere where our paint studio fam is going to shine because we go over this every time we paint together in a paint studio. That's not dark enough for me, paint studio fam. Am I going to change my paint color? Am I going to go in and go, okay, I, I think since this isn't dark enough, I'm going to switch to this one. Am I going to do that? Yes or no? Is that what I should do? Because that's not dark enough for me. That's not going to be noticeable enough for me. Am I going to switch to a darker blue? No! Yes! I told you y'all were going to shine. This is where we shine. These are the little things that we learn over in the paint studio. We do not change color just because that's not dark or deep enough for us, okay? Um, Christy says no. Marie says no. Maria says no. Anna says no. Cindy says no. Anna says no. Dawn says no. Everyone's saying no. Terry says add another coat. And that's what we're going to do. We're, this dries super fast, okay? Because we're putting on super thin layers of paint. It dries in no time. By the time you finish shading with one color, if you want to deepen it up, you don't have to change your brush or reload or anything. Or um, you don't have to clean your brush or or wait for anything to dry. This is already dry. Look at this. Oh, that's wrong hand. Wrong hand. It's dry. It's all dry. All this is dry. It dries super fast. So I'm going to add another coat. So there's layer number one. And I actually, this is how I prefer. If I want a subtle, just variation and depth to my, my design. But say I really want a good shadow on something. All you do is add a second layer. Or you can you can start a little further in and work your walk your way back towards the edge. And that'll bring your your um, your float a little further in and dissipate it in the perfect progression towards the edge where it should be darkest. It should be darkest on the very edge and it should perfectly ombre to your base coat color. No more paint. Yes. All right. I am so proud of y'all. I, I knew y'all would shine. <laughs> Look at Miss Karen with her heart. She goes, no. <laughs> she says no in such a sweetest way. Layers are your friend. That's right. Okay, so when it comes to shading or floating, uh, at least at least shading with the float technique, which is, to me, it's the easiest way, and it's the way that you can con have the most control. Okay, so I'm going to dip the corner in the floating medium just to keep my brush nice and wet because the floating, remember, the floating medium dries just as fast as your paint does. So it's not going to keep your brush completely lubricated throughout this entire process. You're going to want to keep it saturated with floating medium, right? The only problem is you don't want to cross contaminate this little puddle of floating medium. So you're going to want to pick it up. And if you're going to be floating with different colors along the way, you really don't want to side load it with the floating medium. You want to pick it up on the corner. It's okay if you get a buildup of floating medium. It self levels and it dries crystal clear. As long as you do the little step over here where we check our brush, where we make sure there's no hidden paint in our brush before we ever add new uh, paint colors, 
then you should be okay. Red is the only one that I don't trust. I do not trust red. When I've painted with red with a brush and I go to float later on, I typically change brushes because red sneaks its way into, I don't know what special property red has that hides up in the, up in the ferrule or up in the bristles. And it always comes out when I'm floating, but I don't trust red. <laughs> All right, walk out the first coat, then float the darker color tight to the edge. Absolutely. So let's do that. So we're going to walk out. What, she, what she's saying is we're going to start closer to where we want our float to end. So say I don't want to. So we're going to walk it out here, and we're just going to put our little layer there. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm starting and I'm building it this way. I actually did it backwards. So, so I'm starting here and I'm going to walk it this way. Okay. I'm going to let that dry. And while I'm letting it dry, I'm going to pick up some floating medium. I'm going to side load my desert turquoise. It's still shining, so we are going to hit it with a blow dryer. The good thing about floating medium is like your matte acrylics, it dries matte, so you know when it's... There you go. That's what she was saying. You start your first layer and walk it out until it completely disappears. And then when that's dry, you come back in and you get real tight on the edge and do that second layer of floating. See all the different variations that you get with floating, all the different ways that you can add shading or shadow or depth. It, it really takes your pieces to the next level. So let me show you a piece that I did some floating on. We painted it together last month during Sneak Peek Week for Paint Studio. And it is, there's not a stitch of paint pen on here, okay? But all the depths, all the, see all the edges here, we did all of that with floating, okay? We didn't keep it very clean like we are here. Like, we're not keeping super straight clean lines because this was, this is a pie, right? When you bake something, it's got little texture and bumps to it. So we kept it kind of, kind of, um, fluid is not the word. Fluid is not the word, but that's the word that's coming to mind. What's another thing that we floated? All of its apples. Well, then I can have it. All the apples I kept kind of, kind of like free-handed. See all the little depth in here that we added with just a little bit of floating. It adds shadow. It adds texture. It adds, it adds just that hint of color that you can't get. That subtle hint of color. I love the, this technique. This is probably one of my favorite techniques and I use it on practically everything. These are my favorite colors. So pretty. I use them a lot when I'm demonstrating. These are really pretty colors and I feel like they're pretty versatile. They're good spring colors or good winter colors or good summer colors. I could even incorporate this into Christmas if we wanted to get nice, bright and funky for Christmas. Oh, that's too heavy for that arm. Let's grab it with this one. <laughs> I get very zealous when I'm like, I just want this arm to be back to normal and the strength is just not there and the ligaments and everything that's in there that's real sore. I don't trust it to pick stuff up yet. And when I do pick stuff up with it, I regret it immediately. Good morning, Cynthia. I love the info that you give. Well, Jill, I really do try to break it down. I try to break it down. I try to make it as easy as possible. Okay, so now that we know the ins and outs of floating, let's let's use it on something else. Let's let's wow. Oh my that hurts. Let's make a project. So I've got my turntable here because we're gonna be using a smaller piece. Let's go here. There. Okay, so we've got a smaller piece. This is an ornament. This cut, uh, this cutout can, is over at Home Creations, and I can link it in the comments below. Just put the word float in the comments, and I will link um, where you can get this, this, uh, this blank. I will link where you can get this blank if you need it. I will also link info about the paint studio if anybody's interested on 
more info on the paint studio. Okay, so let's brainstorm how we want to paint our our ornament. Do we want to do traditional colors? You know what? You know what? Let's do Grinchy colors because those those gave me life. I loved those colors the other not the other day. Let's do Grinchy colors. I should have those out already. Or we could do peppermint. What should we, what should we do? What hey Erica, I love to do shading you said sheila you said shaving but that's funny that made me giggle i almost laughed really loud at that i love to do shading your way on my ornaments and door hangers since i finally got the method down it does I, i'm telling you it takes some practice with a mixed media pad it does take some practice but once you get okay so we've got peppermint we got grinch anybody else got a uh christmas a grinch miss vibes please grinch okay well y'all y'all voted for grinch color so let's go with grinch so we painted with sour apple. If I can find where to go. There it is. Not sour apple. That's sour apple. So we've got sour apple. Okay. Actually, I'm going to be painting first. What, what, what should we do? We're going to do some stenciling. So let's do. How should we paint this? Uh, shading is all new to me and I really want to learn. Okay, so Mary, shading is super easy, especially the way that I teach it because I, it's kind of cheating almost because a lot of people will do a wet on wet technique and I like to do shading that way sometimes, but you can't predict it. You can't really, um, you got to sit and work with it and work with it. At least when I know when I'm floating, at least when I know when I'm floating that I, I know I'm a, I'm in a little bit of control. I have a little bit of control. Okay, so I'm just going to flip through my, my stencil book real quick because I want to find a really pretty stencil for a background. I think what we're going to do is we're going to paint solid. And we're going to do a background. I don't know. I don't want to do our paint studio background because we do that one a lot. And I don't want to do cheetah. I don't want to do cheetah because I feel like we do that a lot. Let's do something different. You know what? I think I know what I want to do. I think I want to do a heart because in the Grinch, his heart grew three sizes. I think I have an idea. I think I have an idea. And if this turns out super cute, I may make it into a template and it may be a freebie. So if you put the word float and if I do end up making a, a freebie template out of this, then anybody who puts the word float will be getting it if in the event that I do it. If it turns out cute, I mean, if it doesn't turn out cute, then obviously we'll just nix the whole idea, right? So I just have this generic template. Let's see what brand it is. It's the show off brand. So it came from Hobby Lobby. We're going to put a white base coat down because, and this is a no-no. Do as I say, don't do as I do because that's a no-no. We never put, we never put, paint to wood we always want to dip our brush in the in the paint and then spread it out that way because it can just it can it can cause messes okay there's something about putting your paint directly on your wood that if you don't start working the paint immediately it creates the shadow of where that puddle was and I have never been able to get rid of that little puddle shadow I have to sand it down Okay, so we're just going to base coat this white. I think what we're going to do, we're going to add some texture, y'all. I'm so excited. All right, I think what we're going to do, I said we weren't going to use cheetah print. Oh no, Cynthia, I hope it's not frozen. It shouldn't be frozen. My playback's not frozen. Hold on. Where'd I put my other? There it is. Let me see. Let me let me put it up. Let me pull it up. Let me check my let me check my video, y'all. Do do do. do. Let's pull up our video. Cynthia says it's frozen. Okay, Miss Pam says it's not frozen. Cynthia, yeah, mine's not frozen. See, it's still, it's still a going. Let's see if my hand pops up. 
Yep. See, there's my hand. There's my, okay. We're not frozen. We're not frozen. We're good. Okay. Ooh, don't tell me that. Cynthia. I was worried. Okay. Okay. So a Christmas green accent too. Okay. So let's, let's work, let's work on this one first. Let's get our, let's get our Grinch green. Okay. We're going to clean our brush. I think what we're going to do is we're going to do a background stencil on top of the green. Okay. Let's see what, hold on. Sheila gave some, maybe a Christmas green accent. So, Tusa red, pea green, dark green with a little, hmm. Let's see. I think I have an idea. I think I have an idea. Sheila comes out with some really good ideas, y'all. Anytime I see her name with some suggestions with it, I'm like, hold up, hold up. She comes up with some pretty, um, solid ideas her brain is just so it's really creative we may need two coats of this of this grinchy green this is sour apple now the grinch is a little deeper than this so i don't want to go super super matchy matchy because i don't want to I don't want to upset anybody with a little bit of power <laughs> when it comes to this mean green man. So we're going to blow dry that because remember, wet paint moves wet paint. If we want full coverage or more coverage, then we need to make sure every layer that we do is dry before adding another one. Okay. Um, so since we have streaky mess right here, we need to dry this before adding another coat. Okay, I, I was just about to say, Cynthia, if you, if you leave and come back in sometime, it'll trick your internet connection into thinking that you're not using it anymore, and then it'll, it'll let you watch. Aw, Sheila, I love you too, boo. You did hear that we're going to postpone this fall's retreat, right? We're postponing it till the spring. Just because of my arm, and because of daddy, and just because of life. I feel like I would be totally distracted or not really able to, I don't think I would be healed completely enough by next month to, to do all the heavy lifting. I, lo I love this color too. Oh, I got thick paint in my, my bottle. It's not letting any more paint come out. Owie, 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 owie. Let's see if we can just pour some out. Pour some sour apple on me. That doesn't go. That's too many syllables. Anybody else just random songs pop in your head if you say a certain thing and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, that kind of sounds like, and it hurts you to not physically sing it out loud. Nope, just me. Cool. Cool. All right, so there we go. Full coverage, Grinchy Green. That's sour apple. That's two coats of sour apple on top of a white base coat. I live in a musical. <laughs> Me too, Marie. Me too. All right, y'all, let's catch one Nella up. She just popped on. We need to let this dry, and it's still a little chilly to the touch. It's not cold, but it's a little chilly, so while that's drying, let's see if we can reach back here and show her what we worked on in the beginning. So if you go catch the replay after we're done here, Juanella, we go over some shading, like just the basics of shading, but now we're putting it to good use, okay? So the way that I typically attack shading is I get all my base coating done. I get all, I get everything kind of base coated and color blocked out. So we're going to get all of the actual painting done and then shading is dead last. I do all of that at the very end, unless it's teeny tiny little things, right? So we've got our hearts. I have multiple sizes of hearts and that's going to be important. We're kind of brainstorming an idea here. I'm going to look for a background stencil. And lately, Mandela's have been super, super popular. I don't think this one's big enough. 
Although I could probably piece it together, but I don't want to have to work that hard. I want this to be kind of effortless. Let's see if we can find a stencil that's either continuous or big. Continuous or big. Now I'm trying not to use the exact same stencils that I've been using, although I almost talked myself into the, the leopard print stencil again. I was that close. My kids and grandkids always get mad at me when I burst out into song. My son and his friends used to call out random words to see if I could sing a, or. <laughs> so I make up songs too. Half the time with something strikes my fancy. I'm like, oh, that sounds like it'd be a good song. Okay, let's see. Nope. Okay, so let's go to the bigger stencils. This, I keep all my little stencils in a binder. If you're wondering what I was pulling through, I keep them in a binder. And these are just page protectors, the heavy duty page protectors. And I just kind of keep them. And I just flip through. Some of them I made on my Cricut. Some of them uh, I bought from the dollar store or from Hobby Lobby when they go on clearance. I typically pick up my stencils when they're on clearance. Or if there's one specifically that I'm looking for. And I know I'm going to use it mm, a lot. Oh, wait, Lori's. She's begging for the Mandela. For Mandela. Here's my big one. This is how I store my big one. So it's a it's a portfolio from Michael's or Hobby Lobby. You can get them at both. This is a, a 14 by 17. It fits the big ones I just slide. The big ones I just kind of slide in there. But the, the kind of bigger but not too big ones, they kind of... Oversized medium ones. I have this upside down, I think. Just looking for a decent size. There's one that's lace. Here, we've got this lacy one. I'm not a big fan of adhesive stencils. I bought a bunch of them, not realizing what I did. And I throw nothing away. I'm bad. I'm a hoarder. Okay, so we've got that one. Ooh, we've got a Harlequin one, and it's kind of Tim Holtzy. We've got a Harlequin one, which is kind of a diamond back. What should we do? What shall we do? Okay, I think I figured it out. We're taking too long to pick a stencil. Erica, just pick one and go. Pick one and go. Okay, I think I know what I'm going to do. I also have a Damas one. So this will kind of give Lori a little bit of that. Let's pick this Damas one. I use this one a lot. Or I used to use it a lot. There's lace. I just don't want anything to be super distracting from the hearts. Oh, yeah. That's going to be super pretty. And I don't want to use my typical stencil that I like to use all the time. Which is what I consider our paint studio stencil. Okay, so I'm just going to pick. I'm just going to kind of put. Here, this is a. Okay. I'm going to put my ornaments. Uh, this is a very overpowering stencil, but it's going to work. It's going to work really well. I'm going to put my stencil kind of where it's fully covered. I'm going to kind of center that. Now I usually use makeup sponges from Dollar General, but I picked this up from the Dollar Tree. This is just a, it has the consistency of memory foam, which is why I like the, the, the makeup sponges from Dollar General. But this is the same thing and it's reusable. So I'm going to dip it in my Grinchy Green, which is sour apple. I'm going to pick up a little bit of white and I'm over on my palette and I'm just mixing them together until I get a lighter shade of the Grinchy Green. I don't want it to be super distracting. I just want it to be about a, uh, a shade lighter. A shade or two lighter than this original green. So I'm just going to, with light pressure. So the thing I like about this more of, than the makeup sponges from the Dollar General, the disposable ones. So the ones from the Dollar General would be perfect for um, like paint parties and stuff because they're disposable. You know, let your paint party goers use them and then throw them away after the party's done. 
but this right here holds the paint. It doesn't let it soak in too much because it's used to foundation, right? So it's not going to soak it in. No, no mosquito. Uh, doesn't let it soak it in. It makes it sit on the very tip top of the, the sponge so that you get more coverage out of it before you have to reload. So the way I load, see there's not a lot of paint on there, okay? I load my, my sponge and then I try to tamp off as much as I can before I ever touch it to the wood. And I have found that I really like this thing. I have uh, used it many times now and I, I love it. Like I, I can use it and then throw it in my water or put it in a Ziploc baggie. And when I go to wash all my brushes out, when I'm done painting, all I have to do is take it to the sink and it washes out just like a regular makeup sponge. And it's nice and firm and sturdy. I feel like I would get a lot of use out of this. I haven't had it long, but I have used it multiple times. And so far it's gotten really good use. Okay, so we're gonna pick this up. Look at that barely there stenciling. I still need to put a little peekaboo there, but I need to let this dry. Look at it. No, I, di I didn't wet the sponge, Mary. It's not like our sea sponges. You know, there are some sponges that you do wet first. You don't have to. You can. Just be very careful not to oversaturate it. Okay. So just like floating, stenciling dries really fast because you're using very, very little paint. Okay, so let's scoot this over. This is this is a continuous one. So I'm gonna try and match this up. I'm gonna try and match it up so that I can get look, this is I just wanted this one little bit right here because it's important. So in my brain, that was super important. But uh, it was just too naked right here. There, there was this big, huge, awkward visual pause. Okay, so I'm done with this for right now, okay? So I'm going to try and get the majority of this paint off. I do have multiple of these. Or I could use my disposable ones. But for right now, I'm, I know I'm going to be stenciling again. So I don't necessarily want to throw that in the water yet. But if you have multiple or you're using disposable, throw it in the water so that it doesn't dry out. You don't want that paint to dry in there. Okay, so now that we have our, um, now that we have our background, goodness gracious, I could not get that word out of my, out fast enough. Okay, so now we need to paint this up here. What colors should we paint that? I already know Maria Martinez's boat. Maria, you don't even have to vote. I know your boat. <laughs> but what, what color should we paint the, the kind of connector? I've always called these just little connectors. The little, the little casing up here. Uh, we can do a metallic. We could do a solid color. Uh, we are going with a Grinchy-like vibe to it. No, just the paint. Yeah, okay. So you were answering Mary for me. Um, do, 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 silver. Terry says silver. Let's see if I have a silver. Oh, yeah, I do. I do. I think. Ooh, I have a champagne gold. I have champagne gold. I do have silver. Or in French, it's called argent. Argent. And do, 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 let's see. I also have kind of a like a coppery color. Okay, so Karen says 10, which is the silver color. Everybody's saying silver. Okay, so when we use silver, we need to do a gray undercoat. So let's grab a gray. doesn't matter if it's dark gray, light gray, medium gray, gray, gray. It don't matter. Gray. So I'm using slate gray. You can use sky gray, storm gray. We just want to do a base coat. So I'm going to start down here. I usually use an angle brush when doing curves like this, but it's okay. I had my flat brush out.
can you float on metallics? I get that question a lot. Yes, you can float on metallics. It's just like anything else. It just needs to be completely dry before you start working with it. Okay, so there's our coat of gray. I don't need to do a second coat because this is just an undercoat. Okay, so let's blow dry that and then we'll go in with our tin. Okay, let's go in with our tin. This is the Extreme Sheen Silver. My favorite silver color is the Extreme Sheen Tin. But I that I didn't pull that one out. This one, uh oh, uh oh. Let me shake it up better. Because it came out nothing but floating medium. It's a little better. Okay, so let's go in. Oh, that's got a lot of green still on it. <gasps> oh, no, Lori. Boo for phone conferences. You can always catch the replay. You know that. Go to, I'm sure it's a phone conference for the babies. Go, go take care of the babies. Give those babies a hug for me. I hope they're feeling better. Her babies were sick this week. So all this does is it gives it a nice, pretty sheen, which is why it's called Extreme Sheen, <laughs> without it being super brush strokey. See? Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, look at it. Let's blow dry that because it does need to be completely dry. And metallics take longer to dry. I don't, I don't understand that. We're watching you on our TV. Oh, you got me on the big screen. I'll put it on the floor so I wouldn't knock it over. Ooh, add some glitter. We just might. Ra Rachel. Oh, Rachel. We just might. Be, be careful with testing metallics because metallics are really bad about getting fingerprints because they can still be a little tacky. <laughs> And that should be good. All right, now let's move on to our hearts. So our theme is kind of Grinchy, right? Grinch inspired. Um, everything is better with glitter. Absolutely, Sandy. I wholeheartedly agree. And I already know what glitter we're going to use. It's been my new favorite, especially like dainty Christmas secret glitter. I think we're going to use that one. So we're going to set that off to the side. So we've got different size hearts here, right? I'm going to try and, should I center it or should I do it off to the side? Because I think I want to put something here. I think I want, hold on. Let me, let me do a little, I'm not going to do any wording here in the live, but I think I will add wording. Let's, let's, let's do some, let me do a little brainstorming real quick. Give me about 30 seconds. Let me see if there's any with words that kind of strike my fancy. Thank you for the hoovulation. <laughs> stink, stank, stunk. That's fun. I want something regarding the heart because his heart grew three sizes. Okay, so, okay. I'm looking. I don't want to necessarily show you my search because I kind of want it to be a little surprise as we build this together. It says you're a mean one. No, oh, I wanted to say, okay, nothing's really like, I have it up here, but I can't really put it into words of how I want it to be without it being infringing. 
So let's let's just skip that part real quick. I think I do want to put it off to the side or down here at the bottom. I think I want it down here at the bottom. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to try and center this as best as possible down here at the bottom. And I'll put something up here about something you're a mean one. Miss Pam says off to the side. Rachelle says off to the side. Oh, ever okay, okay, okay. Kind of off, kind of off kilter, off to the side. Kind of like that, or straight up and down, or here, or down at the bottom in the center. And then we put our wording over here. Mine is sixty-five inches. Oh, I'm not really on the big screen. I like that. I've never used, well, Rochelle, get to it. Metallics are just as fun as glitter. Stink, stank, stunk. And his heart grew. Oh, that's kind of where I was going. Bottom is cute too. Okay. Uh, Sheila says, uh, I have a lot of videos to catch up on this week with spending time with my great grandson. Oh, that's fun, Debbie. I hope you had fun with him. Can you do that? We are going to do three different sizes. Let's see. Great way to show the growing of the heart off to the side. Okay. If any of the things you posted yesterday or the day before were any of those free templates and I saw somewhere it's, uh, no, none of those were free templates. None of those were free templates. All those were uh, just what was added to my website. So every Tuesday and Wednesday, I um, add, we're going to do it kind of, we're going to go in the middle. We're going to kind of go off to the side, but we're going to go off to the side to the center. Like instead of being dead center, we're going to just put it off to the, the center like this. Yeah, I think I, mm, no, I like it off to the side. Let's do it this way. Okay. So now that we've decided and took way too much time to decide that, and his heart grew. Okay. I, I like, and his heart grew. Okay. So there we go. We're going to use Santa red. And I ended up putting my, um, I ended up, I'm going to use a little painter's tape just because I know I'm going to pick my hand up. Owie, 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 owie. I'm going to pick my hand up multiple times and I don't want it to shift because I do know I need to pick up so we're just going to, I like this placement. It's kind of off to the side and off kilter a little bit. Does anybody else say off kilter? I say off kilter a lot. It drives my husband crazy. Okay. So I'm going to say, I used this the other day. So when I use my makeup sponges, these are my Dollar General or Family Dollar makeup sponges. They feel exactly like the Dollar Tree makeup sponge that's reusable. Okay. These are not reusable. These are disposable. Okay. They feel exactly like it. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut that used portion off, okay? I'm going to take my Santa Red. And we're going to lightly tap. I'm using super light pressure. Super light pressure. Okay. And it is going to take two coats for each layer of red. Don't worry. Don't worry. Red's just for snickety like that. Let your heart grow. I love that. That way it's not super grinchy. It's still grinchy-esque. I'm going to have to brainstorm it. If I do a free template, it will include the words, okay? It will include the words. Whatever I pick will include the words. I will tr pretty much take a picture of my finished design and I will... Um, I will send you the link. If you put the word float in the comments, I will give you the buffet of links. And in that buffet of links will be the free template when I get it prepared. Okay. So I'll respond to you personally with that. So there's coat number one. We need to blow dry that. We're not going to move our stencil. We do a light blow dry. Patty Wampus. Caddy Wampus too. Off kilter is my favorite. I don't know why I say off kilter. I don't even know where that originates from. I think it's something my mama always said. 
but the word float because that's the, that's what we were practicing today and we're about once we get our hearts on here we will um, incorporate all the things that we practiced earlier in the video all the tips and tricks and how to float and how to shade we will use that on this entire design here so we'll we'll use it in application right all right so there's our layer of part number one we're going to do three different hearts okay we're going to layer them on top of each other i have multiple size hearts here i think i can make this work and like i said this is a show off stencil you can make your own stencils with your cricket it does not have to be this particular you just want three different size hearts okay and you want to make sure everything's really dry before you pick this up Now, with each heart, we're going to lighten the, or at least with this next heart, we're going to lighten the red, okay? So we're going to find another heart. We're going to try and center it as best as we can. We're not going to be super, we're not going to be super crazy exact about it, but we are going to, we're going to do our best. Okay, so again, using our painter's tape so it doesn't shift. There's a caddy, not sure the spelling, Wampus Art Festival. My niece is an artist and has sold her prints and paintings. Ever. Ooh, that just sounds like, I bet you that attracts some really unique artists. Okay, so I have the original Santa Red. I'm just going to load my, my sponge up again with the Santa Red. But this time I'm going to pick up a little bit of white. Okay. I just want it to be a little bit lighter than the original red. Okay. Super light pressure, su really little amount of paint. All right. The thinnest layer of paint that you can have on the sponge, the better. I'd rather see you do two coats and have them be nice, neat coats then you get super messy and sloppy with it and be very unhappy with your end result. A little bit of patience goes a long way. Okay. Let's just hit it with the blow dryer for just a second. Just a second. We just want that top layer to dry. Oh, Miss Pam says off kilter. Second coat. And if you're wondering what size I'm painting, this is not to, to it, I know it's an ornament shape, but this is an attachment size. So the template that you get will be in an in the same size that I'm, I'm painting now. But you'll also get the JPEG, so you can resize it if you want to. I just want to make sure that you get the, um, you can paint the exact same thing that I'm painting today with the free template that I'm going to curate. That's part number two. When stenciling, it's just like shading and floating. You want to make sure everything's super, super dry before moving on to the next step. There's heart number two. Put my cup out of that way because I feel like every time I pick up my blow dryer, it's going to knock my cup over. So, okay, so Terry, attachment size. Let me go over some of my typical sizes, okay? Typically, when I paint, if you ever hear me say I'm painting door hanger size, I like to paint in uh, 22 inches. 22 inches on the longest side. So, my piece of wood is going to be 22 inches on the longest side. Give or take an exception here or there, but general rule of thumb, 22 inches on the longest side. Um, attachment size is about 10 inches for me. Some people like 12 inches, but I like 10 inches. Um, and then uh, ornament size is about four or five inches. Garland size is about six inches. So it just depends on what we're painting. All right, heart number three. 
Again, not being super, I don't care about it being super, um, what's the word? Centered or perfect. We're not going for perfect here. This is handmade. If someone's up there measuring the, the, the margins of your hearts and saying, those are not perfectly centered. What do we say to them? What do we say about those people that walk up to your art with a ruler and start measuring perfection? I just added more white to the, the color that I did with for the second heart. Sorry, I skipped that totally. Totally skipped that. I'm going to add even more white. So all I'm doing is I'm making lighter shades for each heart. <laughs> Sandy says, go away. <laughs> go away. Maddie says, that's definitely so, 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 so cute. Yes, Lori, they're not your friend. If someone walks up to your artwork and says, those aren't perfect stripes, that, that cheetah print isn't um, perfect cheetah print. Your hearts aren't perfectly centered. They're not your friend and their opinion does not matter. Their opinion should not have any weight as how you feel about your art because they're not your friend. Your friend would not come up to your artwork with a ruler and say your your lines are, are not perfectly symmetrical. No, they won't. And I don't encourage that kind of friendship. Not one bit. So if you look on your stencil, that's our original color. That's our second color. And see how much lighter that third one is? I'm going to do one more coat of that last one. Just want it to be nice and solid. And then I'm going to pick it up. I'm done with this. So I'm going to set it off to the side. Now, naturally, we're going to want to use our paint pens, right? We're not going to. We're not going to. There's our three sizes of a heart. And whatever I decide, his heart grew. And his heart grew will probably go right there. But I don't freehand nothing. That'll definitely be a stencil that I use. Or I'll get some tracing paper and print it out. But your template will include the wording. Whatever I decide to put on there, it will include the wording. But right now we're focusing on shading. My sister would, she's so judgment. Laura. Laura. <laughs> I just read your comment. Take the ruler and smack their hand with it. Absolutely. But they're not your friend. Anytime someone judges your artwork, they are not your friend. And I'm, I mean, I, that's a bold thing to say, but I'd much rather, I'd much rather someone be supportive of you than judgmental of you. Because I love you that much. I would much rather know that someone is supportive of you than judgmental. Okay. So when it comes to our hearts, remember we what I consider ghosting out. I took one paint color straight from the bottle and I kept adding white to it to get different shades or values of the same color. That way they're all matchy matchy. They don't clash. If you, know, if you look at this, it's aesthetically pleasing because they all started with the same base color. So we're going to take, well, we're going to take, let me look something up real quick. I have a list that I've kind of compiled of colors that kind of work together that I've kind of tested in. Let's see. in here. Right here. Okay. So we use Sour Apple. Let's see if I've got a green that's like that. We're going to use maybe leaf green. Yep. Okay, and then we've got our Santa Red, and we're going to use a Lizard and Crimson. Those are going to be the colors that we use to shade. And then for our um, metallic, we used Slate Gray. We're going to go with, what's a darker gray? What's a darker gray? Where's my Storm Gray? 
Where's my storm gray? Somewhere over there. Ah, I see it. We're gonna use, uh, no, zinc. We're gonna use zinc. Okay. So there's our shading colors. So we've got our flat brush. Usually I, I, I like to use an angle brush, but I do think for demonstration purposes, I'm going to explain it with a flat brush because the flat brush is symmetrical. There's no point or low end to it. There's no heel. There's no toe. It's all the same, right? So I'm going to start shading with the, let's start with the zinc. Let's go ahead and just knock this out and be done with it. So I'm going to, that's all we need. Just a dot of paint. Remember, we need to load our brush with floating medium. Make sure it's nice and free and clear of any radical paint in there, any paint that's stowing away. We're going to lo load from the side. We're going to make a little loading area. Okay, there we go. Okay. So now we're completely loaded with paint. I'm going to start at the bottom. Now I'm just pretty much just outlining. Just outlining. If you notice, I have not loaded my brush. This is pretty much gliding across that metallic perfectly on one load. You just want to be very careful not to uh, flip your brush over the wrong way where your clear side is. You don't want to put that down where the paint is because then you'll have to start over. You'll have to start over with reloading your brush and making sure it's clean. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and float this side. Now I do have a rule of thumb. I have a rule when I'm shading something, especially if something where all four sides are connected, like a circle or like this little section of the, the connector. I don't do the sides. If the, if the top and bottom are still wet, I let them dry completely. And then I'll come back and do the sides because I don't want to erase all my hard work. While that floating medium is still wet, if, you, if I was to go down this side and cross the work that I've already done here, all it's going to do is erase it. And so I'm going to try not to do that. I'm either going to start from the bottom and work my way up, or I'm going to let it completely dry. That way I can go over it without erasing it. Just depends on what you're most comfortable with, okay? Do you see that? It's just subtle. It's nothing crazy. It's just enough color to make it look a little rounded and heavier without adding such a harsh paint pen, okay? Paint pen can be kind of harsh. Paint pen can be kind of harsh. Now, I'm only going to shade about half of this. I don't want it to be completely circular. That shadow is only going to appear on one side. And I'm going to come over here and add that same on the inside. There we go. We're done with the gray. Uh, see, my mama used to say something really similar, Laura. So when I was growing up, it was a it was a joke, but it did hurt my feelings. I'm not going to lie. It did hurt my feelings growing up. I've now gotten over it because I just, you just consider the source sometimes. But my mom would always say that, um, oh, I can't remember the exact, I've blocked it out so much. I come from a very crafty family. We all have something that we're very talented at. My sister is just crafty all around. She doesn't paint. I mean, she does paint for fun, but she doesn't typically paint as far as like it being um, something that she really practices. She loves cross stitch. She loves to um, flower arrangements. She's very creative 
in, in certain aspects of her life. But uh, my brothers draw. All of them are very, they, they do fine arts is their, where they thrive. I am not a fine artist, right? I am a crafter <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Um, but she would always say, oh gosh, what is the, what was the term that she'd use? Erica's not artsy. She's crafty. No, Erica's not my crafty one. And it would hurt because I, I, I felt like I was crafty. Uh, but she was just joking. She didn't mean it to hurt my feelings, but it, it, it did hurt my feelings. Let's be real. It hurt my feelings. So this is the leaf green. No, festive green. This is festive green. And we're going to build this up in two coats because it needs it. Festive green is kind of sheer. So all I'm doing is in short choppy strokes, I'm just laying down a layer of this festive green. And if your short choppy strokes look short and choppy with the floating itself, then um, what you can do is on the very last stroke, you can just take your brush and kind of smooth it out. As long as the floating medium is still wet, you can smooth it out. This is going to need a second coat. Just because festive green is a little translucent. But it is deepening. Uh, the cutouts. Okay, so the cutouts. I've always provided the cutouts. Now, I don't provide the cutouts inside the group. There, you can... Um, what is the, you can order them. That's the word. You can order them from home creations. I used to provide them through my website, but home creations is able to do it a lot faster than I was, I was able to do it. And I'd much rather you get speedy service, especially when you're ordering something. When you, when you look at the website and you're like, Oh, I really want to pay that. You want to paint it now, right? You don't want to wait two weeks to get your order. So they get it out a lot faster than I could. Okay, there's coat number one. This is already dry. I can already go over this, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to go ahead and dip it, the corner, in my floating medium. And then I'm going to side load some of that festive green. And I'm going to do a second coat and build it up. I don't want it to be super distracting. I just want it to look a little rounded on the edge. See how it's building up this side compared to this side? And don't worry about that little shiny side to the um, to the floating medium. That dries down crystal clear, okay? You will not see that. Oh, I'm, I'm falling in love with this. This is going to be. This is going to. I'm going to have a hard time waiting for Christmas to get here so I can put this on my door. Or on a um, porch cleaner. Now, this size right here would be perfect for a porch cleaner. It would be perfect for an interchangeable door hanger or even a wreath attachment. Okay. Some of my friends are really good wreath makers. They're really talented. And they'll use the 10, 12 inch sizes, the porch liner attachment size. They'll use them for uh, wreath attachments. I love doing this stuff on the fly. We need to do this more often. We need to do this more often. Okay. Now, we're not done with the green because we do need to do some green underneath the bobble connector. Um, I cannot make wreaths. I wish I could. Laura, I'm not very talented with wreaths either. That's another thing my sister does pretty well. She does make a good wreath. She's kind of an amateur wreath maker. She does do a good job with a wreath. 
but her her she has a talent with floral arrangements so that that's the half the battle when it comes to wreath making anyways i'm not very good with floral arrangements i can fake it till i make it but she is very good so i'm just floating a little bit of this best of green underneath y'all don't freak out on the first coat of best of green if it's not as deep as you'd want it to be okay because it's a little translucent it really it remember when i was telling you you can build it up i'd rather see you build it up than change color and then it clash build it up i'd much rather see you build it up and do two coats of your shading and it not clash because if you change colors you're more likely to set yourself up for your colors to clash and now you don't like it i'd much rather you set yourself up for success and like your end product, your final piece, then rush the process and it clash and you not like it. A red green beaded strand of, oh, I need to go to the bead store and see if they have any heart beads, like little heart shaped beads. Y'all know I love me some glass beads. Okay, so I've been using a half inch flat this whole time. Now, I told y'all I prefer to use angles, and I am going to switch to an angle. I'm probably going to switch to a three-quarters inch angle or a half inch angle. I think a three-quarters because this little, this little heart is going to require three-quarters. Owie, 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 owie. I bet you it's in here. Let me show you how I would float with an angle. Come on, angle brush. Where'd you go? Cleaned a bunch of my brushes. And I just put them up, but I didn't put them up properly. There it is. There it is. I just kind of threw them in a bucket. All right, so I'm going to wet my brush, dry it off. You don't want to do floating with a dry brush. You want to go ahead and get it slightly damp, load it with your floating medium. Make sure there's no hidden paint in your brush. Okay, we're going to take our alizarin crimson. And because the Santa red is super dark, we're going to do it last. So let's take our alizarin crimson. And if that sounds familiar, old Uncle Bob used to say alizarin crimson all the time. It was one of his favorite reds. Alizarin crimson. So I'm going to start on this middle heart because I want to see how intense. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to use this alizarin crimson on that middle heart, and it's going to deepen. It's going to deepen the very edge. All I'm doing is I'm just using the toe, which is the long end of my angle brush. So we've been using a flat this whole time, but I want to demonstrate how I would use an angle because it's really my preferred method. So I would just side load my paint onto the toe, and that toe gets right there in those corners. right there in those corners that gives me a nice crisp point okay remember to side load your brush Remember, all my tips and tricks are at the beginning. Of, if you're just now hopping on, all my tips and tricks on how to load your brush properly are at the very beginning. You can always go back and watch the beginning of the replay. It gives you some really good tips and tricks on how to properly load your brush. All right, so there's our shaded um, second heart. We started with the second one just because I wanted to see how deep it was. Now, for that that center heart, I am going to blow dry this because I want to go ahead and go straight into that center one. And then take about a second for this to dry. 
I'm going to take Santa red because remember we added a lot of white to get that center, um, that center heart. So I'm just going to load it with some floating medium. Okay, and we're just going to add it to the very edge. It deepens it up just enough. Gives it just a little bit of depth. It makes that heart look rounded. Oh, don't worry. We are going to shade underneath it just a little bit. I love it just as it is without the words. I think the words may distract from the beauty. Oh, Wendy. It's just whatever you're most comfortable with, Wendy. I use the toe the majority of the time. Sometimes it just depends on what I'm trying to, what nook or cranny I'm trying to get in into. If it's like something tight like this, where that's a tight point, I'm going to use the toe. Just because the toe gets right up in there. Um, same thing with these hearts. There's some curves and stuff. Uh, the heel, I, I use out of laziness, really. I just use it because I, that's how I learned how to do it. And the more I started working with the toe, I got more comfortable with the toe. Okay, so with the this last heart, let's go ahead and load it back up. And we're just gonna go back with the Eliza and Crimson, and we'll just we'll um, we'll do two layers to build it up. Okay. It's just gonna deepen our heart. The toe tends to be my favorite. It used to be the heel. And so if you watch older videos, like a couple, like ones that are a couple of years old, you'll probably watch me use the heel. Now I will say if it's a wet on wet technique, if there's something about the heel. I use the heel a lot. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, the toe or the heel, Wendy and I are talking about the anatomy of this particular brush, an angle brush. So this pointier side, the longer side of an angle brush is called the toe. This what I used to call the back end of a brush is called the heel, the shorter side. And I really like these. If you, if you ever wonder what my favorite brushes are, they're Royal and Lean Nickel. I don't get paid to say that. They don't know I exist. Uh, they are just my favorite for painting, like in general. I love Royal and Lane Nickel's brushes. They hold their shape. They're easy to clean and reshape. They're just they're just easy. And they, they're good quality, especially the Minta. The Mintas are my favorites. The, those are these teal ones. They're my favorites. And you can get them in craft stores. You can pick them up at Lowe's. You can pick them up at Lowe's. No, you can pick them up at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I don't know if you can get them at Joann's anymore. Joann's uh, revamped their brush section and took all the Royal and Lane nickels out, and I don't understand why. I feel like that was a not a mm, not a smart move, at least for me. Okay, there's there's uh, coat number one. This side of my heart is completely dry, but I'm going to blow dry it just for good measure. Yeah, that's why I went ahead and showed the flat brush because I, I typically use an angle brush, but a lot of people start learning with a flat brush. I will say there are times where the only way to get into a certain spot is that angle brush though. They're like these little, those teeny tiny little 
there's certain spots where you're just like, oh, I need to break down, break out an angle brush. I love an angle brush though. I love angles. They are, they are magic workers. All I'm doing is I'm just building this up. I'm, remember I said don't change colors. Just add depth by adding a second coat. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whenever your brush feels like it's drying out and it's not that that color's not spreading as far as it was in the beginning, make sure you dip the heel of your brush in that floating medium and it'll help it'll help spread that paint out a little bit further. Remember, paint, uh, floating medium dries just as fast as your acrylic paint. It's not a dry time extender. All right, I'm happy with that. Now, I'm going to go behind this heart just a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm going to make sure my, my brush is clean. So I just dipped it in the floating medium, and I'm just working it in. I'm going to side load a little bit of this Best of Green. And I'm just going to lift this heart off of this background. This is one of those little tips or tricks that I like to do. I'm not going to do a second coat of it. I'm just going to do one coat. I don't want it to be super distracting. I just want whenever you get real up and close and personal with this, this paint painting, I want it to look like this heart is kind of, something 3d sitting on top of this background right so all i'm gonna do i'm just gonna add a little bit of shadow underneath it so i'm going on the very outside edge Very outside edge. Ooh, 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 ooh. Got a little bit inside my heart. Let's clean that up. Now, if you notice, we did a lot of stenciling on here today, right? There was, we stenciled our heart, but we also stenciled a background. And I always sandwich my stenciling in between my base coat and my floating. So it goes base coat, stencil, floating. And that's because you want your floating, your shadow, your shade to be on the very tip top layer, the very last layer. And then it, lift the, it lifted the heart. I love that little, that little tip. There's, there's um, many times that we kind of forget that. And once we're done, painting you're like it still looks a little flat i don't know where i can add some dimension and that's when we typically will grab for the paint pens and be like okay well it doesn't look as dimensional as i want it to let me grab a harsh paint pen i'm not anti-paint pen believe me because we're about to use one here in just a second I'm about to use one here in just a second because let me show you my favorite way to use a paint pen my favorite application of using the paint pen. So we're technically done. It just needs some words, but this, this piece is done. It's shaded. It's perfectly curated. It's ready to be sealed. We are going to add a little bit of glitter, but let's add our paint pen first. 
I know, Terry. When I saw your name, I was like, ooh, let's do. Terry always brings up, let's lift it. She'll say, let's, let's lift it. Let's shade behind it. I knew that was your favorite part. Okay, so if you look super close, now right here is the wettest part. I got really thick with my floating medium, so it's still a little damp. So you see a little bit of a halo right here where the floating medium stops. But when this gets bone dry, if you look over here, you don't see where any of my brush strokes are from the floating medium, right? You don't see it underneath here. You don't see it. All you see is the little layer of paint that we put down for... Um, enhancing the piece right so let me grab my paint pen bag i keep all my paint pens in this cute little bag that my sweet friend miss bonnie was it miss bonnie or was it miss pam i think it was miss bonnie gave me miss pam get at miss pam the bag that you gave me that holds all of my little goodies sits right here next to me and it holds literally all my extra little goodies and i keep it on the bench of my of my um of my kitchen table because that's where we are painting right now i keep it on the bench and whenever we have company that comes over i just pick the bag up it's like a it's a really cool caddy that has po pockets all around it and it's purple it's so pretty and i just pick it up and go put it in my bedroom real quick Okay, so here we go. We're going to do some stitch marks on our hearts, okay? So, ooh, hold on, we need to prime this. Now the template will not have these stitch marks. These, if you notice with my templates, I try not to put too much detail. All this freehand detail that's, I mean, it doesn't take any kind of talent whatsoever to freehand some little dashes, right? Some little faux stitches. So there's that. That added some texture right there. Oh, I love my little bag, Miss Pam. I love it. So I want to do it to the other two uh, hearts as well. I don't know if I want to do. I think I'm going to do like little X. Do little X's. For my other heart teeny tiny little X's and then I'll do uh, some more straight stitching for that center one. I just wanted different stitching. You could have done zigzag stitching. My mama and my granny are were cross stitchers and so these little cross stitch marks are my favorite. They look really bold on camera but they're not as bold in real life so when you see them on camera and if that they look super, super cool. Then we're going to go boop, boop, boop. Totally a skippable step. If you don't like it, you don't have to do it on yours. I love patchwork. Anything that makes it look like patchwork, I love it. You can also go around the edging here with some uh, faux stitches, but that's my favorite way to use a paint pen. I love the cutest little bag that Miss Pam painted. Oh, wasn't that super cute? It was super cute. All right, so if you put the word float, because we, we learned how to float today, right? If you put the word float, the template for this, including whatever words, I think I'm going to put, and his heart grew. I think that's what I'm going to put, and his heart grew. Um... I don't know i haven't decided yet but we can put that let's go ahead and add glitter we said we were going to add some glitter let's add some glitter we've got time we've got about 30 more minutes before i gotta shut down shop and start cleaning up all right so i've got this glitter it's called um starfall a snowfall it's called snowfall and it's folk art i love it so i'm gonna take this 
And I'm going to take, uh, it's an angle brush. You can take any brush that you're most comfortable with. I'm just going to put it on this teeny tiny little heart in the center. And we're going to let that dry. You too, Terry. All right, we're going to let that dry. And we're going to add another layer because glitters, loose glitters like this, well, this isn't loose, glitter paints like this, don't get full coverage on the first coat. You've got to build it up. You gotta build it up. There we go. That should be good enough. Just a little bit of glimmer to kind of separate that heart from all the other ones. I love it. All right. So there's that glitter. I'm gonna put that over here so I don't forget to put that in the paint list. Also, if you put the word float in the comments, you will get the paint list of every paint that we use today to make this um, to make this design. And we kind of freehanded this today. This was fun. All right. So like I said, I still need to go and put some words on it because I, I do feel like it does need just a little ditty, just a little ditty right here. I do agree with you in the fact that it is fine just as is. I think we can make a little raffia bow or a little, little tool bow to go right here. Um, let's go ahead and take our furniture pen. I get this at the Dollar Tree. It's the black furniture pen. It comes in a pack of three. I throw the brown ones away and just keep the black. I get it in the automotive section. So let's move this off to the side. So you see all the paint build up on the side. Look at that. It doesn't hurt the front. So that side compared to that side takes it to a totally different level. In my opinion, it makes it look a little bit more professional. So if you're taking these to craft fairs or if you're selling them as order, painted orders, I highly recommend investing in a couple of these furniture paint pens. These are just furniture paint pens. It's just the black one. I like the black one just because it's it covers all paint colors, even the metallics. The other ones just don't have the be the same coverage that the black one does. So there we go. So if you put the word float in the comments, I will come back in after I've created the template for this. Because like I said, we freehanded this. But I think I'm going to give this away as a freebie. I think this one will be a free printable template. I'm going. The template will be in attachment size, okay? Um, but you will also get the JPEG so that you can resize it to whatever uh, size you want, or you can put it into your cutting machine and cut out your own blanks as well. Um, you'll also get the, the paint list. If you put the word float, you'll also get the paint list and uh, where you can purchase a blank. So if you want to purchase the blank, this is a 10 inch, but you can order it in any size that you want. You can paint it as a door hanger size. You can paint it as an ornament. You can paint it as... Um, um, uh, you can get multiple cutouts and do a garland of them. They'd be super duper cute. Already, I have been doing that with paint pen and bought some of the furniture markers while at Dollar Tree the other day to try. Oh, you're going you're gonna to love the Dollar Tree ones because they're not as expensive as the paint pens. And they last longer. But I found that the paint pens, when I use, I used to use paint pens just like this. And uh, the chisel paint pens didn't last as long. And the tip of the paint pen frayed. I've... This one right here, I've used over and over again, and it's fresh out the package, brand new looking. I just feel like these are these hold up a little bit better to the um, to the sharp edge of, of a blank. Alrighty, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate putting the. You know what? Do we need a little bit of highlight? Do we need a little bit of highlight? Should we put a little highlight on it? I feel like it needs it, but I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you. Um, Agree or disagree with me? Should we do a little highlight? Because we still have a few minutes. We have about 10. 
leave as is. Oh, well, Karen says yes, and Lori says leave as is. Miss Pam says highlights. Okay, we got two votes for highlights. Lori, you're being outvoted today. You are being out. We're going to go with citrine green, okay? Citrine green. Or citron. Citron green. All right, so the way that I highlight... The way that I highlight... We're going to need baby wipes and we're going to need our background, okay? So I'm going to dip my brush in the citrine green, okay? We're going to tap most of it off. I'm going to rub most of it off. Okay? And we're going to pick a spot. I'm going to build it up. Probably not going to do a whole lot. Just pick a spot where you feel like the light's going to hit it. I'm just going in circular motions and kind of buffing it on. You can use a stencil brush. You can use a stipple brush. I'm using a Wet n Wild Dollar Tree uh, makeup eyeshadow brush. It's kind of firm, but it's soft. So I just picked a nice big rounded section of it. I'm just adding a little bit of highlight. And a little bit of highlight. This is the same way I add like rosy cheeks to a, a design that has cheeks, like a gnome or a, like my little cute little bears or a llama. Okay, so that adds a little bit of glare. I want to come down here and do a little bit more. Okay, so now it looks like the glare is kind of curving this way. So since our glare is curving this way, I do want to bring it up just a little bit. I want it to be heaviest right here. This is totally a skippable step. This is just a little advanced for those who want to take it just one step further. Okay, so it kind of curves this way. So when it comes to our hearts, let's add some, I'm going to take a baby wipe. It needs to be a super wet baby wipe, but not sopping wet. Okay, that's why I use a baby wipe and not dipping it into the paint water. I'm going to empty out all of this paint on my brush onto the baby wipe. Look at all that paint that's in there. This cleans my brush without it having to get super submerged in, in paint. Okay, so I'm going to take my dry rag. I always use a rag or a dish towel, and I'm gonna dry my brush off. This keeps my brush dry. If I only have one of these, then I need, that's how I clean it. I have multiple of these though, but I wanna show you how I clean them. All right, so now we're gonna take, let's put a little bit of highlight right here. Let's put a little bit of highlight right there. Let's take, what color do I wanna use? I'm going to take a royal fuchsia or a razzleberry. You just need like a deep fuchsia y pink. Nothing crazy. Just a dot. Okay. Again, you can use a stipple brush or a stencil. What I mean by stencil is something like this that's super hard bristled. 
Um, here's another one that's a little wider. I like the softness of this brush. I'm just going to lightly, barely put in any pressure. I'm going to do a couple of swipes. Pick up my brush. It's barely there, but it is enough to just make it look kind of juicy looking, just kind of plump and, and high in this middle. Like I said, I did all the shading here. So, I mean, all the highlight here. So I'm going to keep the highlight here. I'll work it into the bristles. I go in light, light layers. See, it just kind of lifts it without being distracting. And we're going to do this side as well, just in the, the tippity roundest points of the heart. Totally a skippable step, something that you might want to practice. But I love adding this little bit of interest. So you see, it's just barely there. See, it's just barely there, but it catches the light just right, especially on this really dark one. It lightens it up without having to really be distracting. And like I said, I'm, it's such a light layer of paint that's being, but it's being buffed on. Yes, they do. The brush sealer will, if you're using paint pens and anything that, that is inky like that, it will, the brush sealer will move it because it reacted. It's such a thin, it's so thinned out, it will uh, move it and reactivate it. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. Okay, I'm done. I'm putting my highlight brush up. Don't do it. Now, say, now, say I didn't like it. Say I didn't like it, okay? We put on such a light layer. Look at this. I can lightly buff. Is it going to take it completely away? No, but it is going to tone it down to where it's not as distracting. See, I can tone it. I can tone it down just a little bit. You just want to make sure you use a clean baby wipe. Because remember, nothing was sealed. So say you didn't like it. You can always go back in with light pressure and a baby wipe and just kind of buff it away. But I love it. I think it's just enough glimmer and glare to uh, make things kind of look a little bit more rounded. Do you have a list with your favorite paint colors? And could you please show your floating medium and blending gel and the daytime extender and tell about the difference. I can't remember types and differences. Okay, so making, so this is the floating medium. Okay, please ignore the orange sticker. It's folk art. All it's hiding is the folk art label. And here's the blending gel. And I go over this in the very beginning of the video, but I'll, I'll go ahead and do a real snippet about it. I go in depth at the very beginning. So when we're done here, I want you to go back and watch the first five minutes of this video, okay? Floating medium is the clear stuff inside your paint. Okay, it dries the same time. It does the exact same job. It just doesn't have color. Okay, this is what floating medium does. It helps make floating easier. Floating is a type of shading. It's a dry shading technique. Instead of doing a wet on wet, it's dry. So every layer you do needs to completely dry. And this dries at the exact same rate as your acrylic paints because it's the clear stuff inside your acrylic paint, right? Blending gel looks identical. They look identical to each other. The difference is this stays wetter longer. This is called a dry time extender. This helps you work with your paint a little longer than the natural dry time of your actual paint, okay? This, the floating medium, will not do that. 
the job for the blending gel, that's what it does. It's a dry time extender. It also helps with blending colors. So if you're wanting to get an ombre and it's, it's kind of difficult, adding some blending gel to your brush may help move the paint a little bit. It makes it paints more translucent. It makes them wetter, longer. Um, I love blending gel, but I don't use it quite as much as I use floating medium because I use floating medium on practically every piece just because I like to add shading. I'd rather add shading or shadows than use a paint pen. I hope that helps. Oh yeah, no, I, I believe me. I was thinking, I was like, it, it can, it can definitely take it that one step too far. I struggle with the one step too far, like loving it, loving it. Oh, and all of a sudden it's one step too far. That's the reason why I didn't do any highlight up here only because this is uh, metallic. And so we don't necessarily want to shade a uh, highlight on top of metallic. Metallic will have its own highlight. It picks up its own highlights. Alrighty, like I said earlier, if you enjoy doing this project with us, put the word float in the comments and you will get a link to the free printable template in JPEG so that you can make your own. You will also get the paint list that we, all the paint colors that we used here today. Um, looks like there's about nine, 10, including the floating medium. And then also you will get information on the paint studio. There were a couple of questions about that. So since that was asked, I will go ahead and link that as well. Um, the heart is a sh chef kiss. I love it. I'm, look, we built this together. So since we built it together today, it's just natural that we should do this as a free printable template. Huh? Huh? I think so. Alrighty. I love a good impromptu tutorial. It, they're my favorite. Thank you so much. Just jumped on. So I didn't know uh, if you had already explained. Oh, I don't mind. I never mind explaining, especially floating medium, because it's one of my favorite tools that I use here uh, to paint here with y'all. So if it can help you understand it and help you with your painting skills, I'm always here. All right. Well, I'm going to hop off. I will talk to you later. Bye.